I'm going to show you how to add a heat map infographic in PowerPoint using the Engage add-in. So first you want to make sure you've selected the Engage tab at the top, select Infographics, and from there select Heat Map. And you'll see the heat map appear over here. Um, now a heat map chart is a great chart to show a lot of data again in uh, one slide. And so you can see here the high values are uh, represent in darker colors. So in this case, a darker blue and the lower values in um, lighter blue. So I'll show you what the data looks like um, that drives this infographic. Each infographic here is tied to an Excel embedded worksheet. So to access this worksheet, um, you access it from the dialog box here and uh, you click on the edit data button. So this is what the data looks like. So you see in the first column, you have the months, and then in the first row, you have the years, and where those two uh, intersect, you'll see the value. And this is um, the value that drives the color of uh, the box in the heat map. So if I were to put uh, a much higher value in uh, May of 2002 uh, and close this, uh, you'll see the heat map redraw and keep an eye for uh, May of 2002. So you see this is now the uh, much, much higher value. Um, so when you open uh, this uh, embedded Excel uh, worksheet, uh, it's embedded into uh, the PowerPoint presentation, so you don't have to uh, save it. But if you want to, you can go to file and do a save as and save it to your desktop, make whatever changes you want to. You can email it to someone else. They can email it back to you. Um, and as long as you maintain the structure of the uh, worksheet, which is to say um, column A is the, the first column is the labels. And then the first row is uh, the top uh, labels. Um, then you can um, add whichever data set you wish. And as well, part of that structure um, is keeping the name of the worksheet Engage Heat Map Data uh, as such so that the uh, system can read it. So I've gone ahead and done that. Um, and so I've prepared a different data set for today and I will import it into Excel. That's the other way you can update the data. So um, on this edit data, there's a triangle. If you click on that and then you click on import from Excel. So I will grab uh, this file here, heat map, and it'll redraw with uh, the data that I have from here. So um, what I'll do now is I'll just add a bit more contrast. So the fill ranges, I uh, can update the colors over here. So I'll keep the max range the same blue, but for the min range, um, I'll make it orange, just to add more contrast. So uh, what you're looking at here is a, um, capabilities assessment uh, for a large company. And uh, I'll show you what that data looks like by clicking the edit data button. Um, so on the left here in that first column, you've got the different groups. So you have senior leadership, project management, finance and accounting, and so on. And across this top in that first row, you have uh, the different capabilities. So teamwork, communication skills, problem solving, and, and so on. And so where those two values intersect, you have a value, uh, a score from one to a hundred. And so uh, a higher score is obviously better and a score you know, below 50 really uh, represents a capabilities gap. Um, so I'll just go ahead and uh, close that uh, worksheet. And um, now I can go ahead and you know, um, make changes to this to make it more readable. So the first thing I wanna do um, is in terms of the fill range, uh, it's set on auto, so I'm not gonna change anything there. But if I wanted to show, um, uh, if I didn't wanna show any values above a certain score for whatever reason, I can uh, override the automatic and click on fixed and then just make uh, this uh, 75. And uh, what it'll do is, um, Anywhere where there's a score of over 75, it now becomes an out of range color. So what I can do there is I can just select uh, a different color for the out of range values. So, um, but like I said, what I'll do is I'll just keep it to auto because I, I want to show all the values in the range. And uh, I can add a legend, but in this case, um, 
um, I'll just show you how that looks like, but that could be uh, scores. And I can see the score, uh, the range of scores from the low of 25 to the high of 82. Uh, but in this case, I will turn that legend off. And um, what I will do though, is I will show the interior values. So I'll actually show the scores in um, the cell blocks. Uh, and then what I will do as well is I'll change the color of the left labels and the uh, top labels. So I'll just make them a bit darker just so they're a bit more uh, readable. And I might just increase the size a bit as well. So um, that's how you do that. And again, for the top label fonts, I'll make these um, a bit darker as well. And uh, a bit uh, bigger as well. So there are a couple other options. I can change uh, the interior font as well, but in this case, uh, white contrast works well. And then uh, the horizontal top labels, what it, that means, that option is I can um, rotate these. So instead of them being um, sideways like this, I can just make them horizontal uh, instead of being vertical. Uh, but in this case, I will keep them vertical because um, I need the space. So I'll close that. And um, finally, what I can do as well, um, I'll just select um, the infographic. When I select the infographic, you'll notice that uh, there's these two gears that appear. If I click on those gears, that's what brings me back to the dialog window. Um, so in this case, uh, what I can do is I'll just align this to the grid. I'll align it to the first column. So there's a smart grid system. and um, what this lets you do is when you click on the object, I can easily just align it to the second column, the third column, and so on. Um, so what I did, I just aligned it to the first column. And uh, what I'll do as well is um, I'll make sure this aspect ratio button is clicked. And I'll just resize it um, to a bigger number of columns. So this would be a 10 column wide infographic. Um, so it goes to the 10th column. If uh, I wanted more room, say, to write or add a legend to the right of this infographic, uh, I could make it a bit smaller, make it maybe an eight column wide infographic, and then I could add my legend and some text on this side. Uh, so that's the heat map.